Today we'll be talking the pros and cons of the first ever DJI Mini and we'll be discussing is it worth buying or should you just save up for something like the Mini 2 SE? Let's dive into it. This drone replaced the DJI Spark in 2019 and since then the popularity of these mini drones has exploded. The Spark was kind of a flop in my opinion. I've been testing this drone out on Vancouver Island, Canada over the past week and if you wanna play around with some of the footage, I have photos and videos ready for download in the description box. Before we jump into the pros of this drone, I just wanna say a big thank you to all my subscribers over the years. It's gotten me to the point where I can start thinking full-time on YouTube thanks to cool channel sponsors like Motion Array, but more on them later. The first pro is price. I got this thing for 150 Canadian dollars on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I do think I got a good deal, but you'll be able to find it in the States for about 150 to 200 US dollars. So if you crash this thing, it's a non-issue. The second pro is that you can charge this thing literally anywhere with a portable power bank. And in my video about the Mini 2 SE, I talked about I was traveling in Jordan with the desert, had a full power bank and only one battery. So I quickly was able to just plug in the drone and they charge up so quick these mini ones like maybe 45 minutes and then you're good to go again the third thing on my list is that this drone shoots 2.7k up to 30 frames per second I know that's not 4k but 2.7 is definitely enough for modern day standards um, especially if you want to crop in a little bit on that video point number four is that this is the perfect travel drone that flies a little bit under the radar which is really good at 249 grams in Canada we we don't need a license for it, but super lightweight, compact, and portable. For how small this drone is, the battery packs a punch. So you can get anywhere from like 25 to 30 minutes with uh, this drone. But if you do buy it used like I did, just be mindful of the wear and tear that could be on the battery and it could be depleted, maybe not getting the rated amount. If you're finding value in this video, it goes a really long way if you could just leave a like, three, two, one, Thank you so much and let's dive back in. I have two more pros to talk about with this drone and the first one is that it shoots decent photos. Um, they are in JPEG and not RAW but I find it's like a perfect complement to have a drone in your bag. It offers a unique perspective. And with that, with your like camera on ground photos, um, it's really nice to have like some complimentary drone shots as well. I was able to get some decent editing going um, with the JPEGs. And the last pro is that this has some built-in quick modes for beginners. If you're not comfortable with the thumbsticks quite yet, you can do circle, helix, droney, some pullaways. Um, um, so I found that pretty cool, but I did in my testing, I did find that at times it would kind of trip out a little bit, but at least I could use the start or end of the video clip. While we're on the topic of drones, have you ever had your drone footage come out really choppy or jittery? Well, that's probably because you're not using the proper shutter angle, but thanks to today's sponsor, Motion Array, we have the ability to fix that using some of their assets. If you don't know, Motion Array is an online platform designed to make you a better editor and they have hundreds of thousands of assets on there that literally make you look like a way better video editor than you actually are. Well, for me anyways. There's been a few times over the past few months where I'm out with my Mavic Mini and I don't have an ND filter for it. So in order to compensate for exposure, I need to up the shutter speed. But when I do that, I get that really choppy looking video. So in order to fix that, I went to Motion Array, I typed in Motion Blur for Final Cut, and what I got was perfect cinematic looking motion blur, and I applied that as an effect to my video file. And you can see here where it looked choppy before, as soon as I add the effect, it looks a whole lot more cinematic and natural. They have tools for DaVinci, Premiere, Final Cut, Photoshop, whatever software you're using, so don't worry about that either. The good news is that you can try this absolutely free, and if you use the link in my description you can save $50 with purchase of an annual plan and it's actually priced really reasonably. So thank you Motion Array for sponsoring this video and let's get into the cons of the Mini 1. As we go through the cons of this drone be mindful of the price because it is still a really good value even in modern day. So the first con that I have for this drone is that it doesn't use the same controller as the newer drones like the Mini 2 and Mini 2 SE. So you're only getting a range of 4 kilometers instead of 10 kilometers and that's because it uses a Wi-Fi signal. The old controller also dies quicker and is super cumbersome 
system to get your phone inside and it doesn't have any buttons or dials on the actual controller. The antennas are also not built in, so I really prefer the newer style. The next con is that this drone doesn't shoot 4K and it also doesn't shoot 2.7K at 60 frames per second for slower motion, but honestly, the 2.7, 30 frames per second, the fact that it does that and not, not just 1080p is actually pretty good. The next one, and I'm a little nitpicky here, but it doesn't have USB-C, it uses the old USB. Uh, the pro with this is that you probably have tons of cables laying around and they're super cheap. I even find them at the thrift store all the time. The next con we already talked about a little bit, but no raw photos. I really like editing in post and putting my own unique colors and spin on the photo. Um, but if you don't edit and you're just a beginner, uh, this is gonna be totally fine for you. The next two are that it doesn't have object tracking, so I can't just draw a box around me, start walking and have the drone follow. And it also doesn't have sensors and as a beginner, you need to be super careful, particularly in flying drones sideways. No side sensors, there's just sensors on the bottom and no front and rear sensors. So you gotta be super careful when uh, flying this thing as a beginner. Uh, start in an open park and then build from there. The next con is that the sensor on these DJI minis is one over 2.3 inches. And with that, you don't get the best low light image. So you'll see some noise being introduced in lower light conditions. So that's not ideal. And while we're on the topic of the sensor, you don't get the best dynamic range. I find best when you underexpose your videos and photos, I get the best results there. And there's also not a lot of details in the shadows with this sensor. The last con I have is actually the pro we talked about, which is the size. Unfortunately, these things can get taken away in strong winds uh, pretty quick. Even if you're in sport mode, it can be really hard to fly it back. And I've run into some really interesting conditions like recently in Greece, where it was strong winds on Santorini Island, and it was really hard hard to get the drone back. I just had it hovering and before I knew it, it was 20 meters behind me. So be mindful of that. In summary, should you buy the first ever DJI Mini 1? Um, I think it's a no brainer, particularly if you're a beginner, you're in construction or real estate. It's your first time ever flying a drone. If you crash a thing, it's not the end of the world. I do think this is an amazing value. In particular, if you find it for like 150, 200 US dollars on marketplace. But I do think I would urge you to save up the extra 100 or $150 to buy like the mini SE2 if you absolutely need that range. So like double the range in terms of how far you can fly the drone. That's it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Maddie out, peace.